So nitric oxide is foundational. Uh, we have to restore the production of that, but mm -hmm. you still got to focus on optimizing other things, vitamin D, testosterone, estrogen, thyroid hormone. Nitric oxide is foundational, but your body cannot and will not heal without nitric oxide, but mm -hmm. then that allows you to focus on other deficiencies okay. or other issues. But what's clear is if you don't first focus on nitric oxide, then anything else you do, whether it's hormone replacement therapy, uh, vitamin D uh, optimization, or any other supplementation or drug therapy, until okay. we restore nitric oxide signaling, the body cannot and will not heal. Okay, interesting. So we've gone from the discovery to where you, you start to discover the ingredients and so forth that could actually create whatever level you needed. Now, once you put those ingredients together and it becomes a consumable for someone to take, how do you then measure the success of what has been formulated? Well, we test. We don't guess, we test. Okay. So any product we bring to market, number one, we have to make sure it's shelf stable. Okay. Number two, when we deliver this product technology to the end consumer, does it work in every single patient the exact mm -hmm. same way? To answer that question is to test it. So we always test the product. We can, we can look at the pharmacokinetics. We can look at the nitric oxide release profile uh, from the actual lozenge, and then we can give it to patients or consumers and then draw blood, look at the pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, or look at measurable endpoints. What is mm -hmm. the effect on blood pressure? What's the effect on exercise performance? What's the effect on uh, blood flow and vasodilation, either through ultrasound or spec scans or other imaging modalities? So we always put our products to the ultimate test mm -hmm. to make sure that every single person who trusts us with their money, that we're going to deliver on the brand promise of delivering nitric oxide. And yeah. that's what we can do that no other company can do. Yeah, there, there's a lot of products that are out there. I mean, I remember being in the military and especially when you go on deployment, you're switching all the other guys out and stuff. <laughs> and everyone tells you basically what they were taking for their workout routine. Oh, I was stacking this product with this. I remember, uh, what was it, Animal Pack that had all these different vitamins. I mean, taking vitamins and uh, what was the big one? Um, you know, explode. Uh, explode. Yeah, the red bottle, everything. Okay, that was all over the place. Um, those products had a ton of L-arginine. Um, I think it was L-citrulline. Um, of course, a ton of uh, a ton of caffeine and so forth. Um, what's different between that type of nitric oxide booster versus what you've been bringing to the market? Uh, ours works. <laughs> <laughs> Simple explanation. Yeah. yeah, those products don't work. And, and most of those products are caffeinated. Caffeine's a vasoconstrictor. So even okay. if it did produce nitric oxide, the vasoconstrictive effects of caffeine would override any vasodilatory effects of the nitric oxide. Mm -hmm. The other problem is arginine and citrulline really doesn't activate or promote nitric oxide production. People become nitric oxide deficient not because they're arginine or citrulline mm -hmm. deficient, it's because they've lost the ability to convert it to nitric oxide. So that's the fundamental basis for a nitric oxide deficiency. So giving more arginine okay. or citrulline isn't going to fix the problem. And that's what uh, most no. products are. And then, so what we do is we generate nitric oxide. If your body can't make it, mm -hmm. we do it for you, and we fix the reason your body can't make it. So I, and, and one other thing, I've been hearing a lot about uh, dietary nitrate, dietary nitrite, and so forth. But then at the same time, I've heard stuff in the past with hot dogs, yeah. with, with nitrite and so forth. Um, could you talk more about that? Yeah, we've been misinformed. <clears throat> okay. You know, that's called innovation and evolution of science. Yeah. What we thought 50 years ago is not true today. Okay. Uh, nitrite and nitrate were once vilified as the food additives in hot dogs mm -hmm. and cured and processed meats. <clears throat> today we know that they're an essential, uh, really a dispensable nutrient. And it's the, the hmm. benefits, or it's the mechanism of benefit of a plant-based diet. 85% of the nitrate and nitrite we get from our diet come from eating green leafy vegetables. Oh, okay. Only 5% comes from eating cured and processed meats. The other 10% comes from swallowing our own saliva. Mm. 